Glad you're keeping us company. And if you just tuned in, this is Y254. Now, discussion Monday tonight, we are looking at the youth space in the national cake baking. My guests tonight are Anita Nkirote, governance consultant, and Pithon Mushoki. He's the director of Vijana Wongozini. Now, according to the report, uh, uh, the BBI report that was presented last week, Kenyans aged between 15 and 24 make up to 20.3 percent of the population, far above world average of 15.8 percent. And the number of quality, number and quality of jobs ab available to young Kenyans is far less than what is required. Yet we are accused that we do not take part in a national cake baking, rather than we want to be in the cake sharing. And tonight, that's where we want to dwell in and see how else can we be involved. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for coming. I want to begin with you, Anita. Mm -hmm. How did you receive the BBI report? Because before or earlier, mm -hmm. temperatures were high, both politically and even to the electorates. People are wondering, what is this BBI all about and how will we, okay, what will be the content of this BBI mm -hmm. report? Uh, when I received the BBI, I was actually very surprised. I expected very radical uh, reforms in this country, but um, I guess uh, the BBI team, uh, the 14 members, actually read the mood of the country and decided to tone it down a bit. Because if you look at, um, let me take even a political example, the introduction of the position of prime minister. You can see that already Matiangi has been acting as the super CS. So un unless now we are going into legislation processes, it was uh, just um, it, nothing new. Uh, a civil servants should not be engaged in business. These are just experts from the report. Ndegwa Commission, 1971, still outlined uh, the same. And maybe where the youths are, for example, the shared prosperity. Uh, they want youths to be included. We already have the AGPO. Uh, there's really nothing new. What we are asking for is the implementation. My bone is co of contention is why the BBI team still needs another 20 billion to again go around, go around and do what? Consult what? Form again a technical committee. I mean, what, what they're saying, what we're asking for is let's implement the 2010 constitution because that is uh, the best fit all for all of us, especially for the youths of this country. Any attempt to tamper with the constitution that we have and uh, to introduce these uh, funny positions, are, we, we are not taking. If Matiang is doing what he's doing as a super CS without the title of a prime minister, even Shakespeare said, what's in a name? All right, Python, uh, how was the reception of the BBI to you? Uh, so first of all, thank you for having me, Hilary. I think most people <laughs> expected a tsunami <laughs> only for us to see in the sky and just see a very beautiful rain rainbow. Mm -hmm. um, so me, um, I, received it, I received it very <coughs> positively uh, because one of my concerns as a Kenyan and as a young Kenyan has always been national ethos. We always say uh, Article 10 of our constitution and we boast about these national values but in the real sense, we have no national values. Mm -hmm. So uh, for the task force to identify that indeed we need uh, national ethos and values, we need shared dreams and aspirations of Kenya, I think that we have started the first steps of making a nation. So to me, I've received it with a lot of uh, positivity. It, it also mentioned, uh, I think in the first chapter of the, uh, <coughs> of the report, that um, it mentioned something to do with the crisis in the family. I'm so passionate with the family because if we lose our values uh, at the family unit, then we, we don't have a nation because that's where a nation is birthed uh, from the individual families. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and I think you've also mentioned that uh, also us as young people, we, we feel left out. And um, even as you talked about baking the cake, I think Sisi Vijana Tunatuma Tununwe Unga, and then these other politicians, they come and they do everything in the kitchen when we are out of the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we also want to be part of the baking process mm -hmm. because even in the task force, um, we, we don't have um, a youth uh, face. Mm -hmm. Yes, the issues that have been raised um, most also concern the youth uh, from the issues of unemployment. But when you look at the people pre re presenting, um, presenting uh, the reports to every from the task force, there is no this young person you can say that, ah, this is the face of the young Kenyan in the BBI task force. Mm -hmm. But uh, all in all, I think the BBI is, um, 
is a, it's, it's a blessing to this nation. But my challenge is just the implementation because I know the politicians will just seek uh, mm -hmm. Uh, issues to do with the Prime Minister and everything, but if we actually focus on the nitty gritties of the BBI, mm -hmm. uh, trust you me, uh, this nation is going to change for the better. So I'm looking forward the day the politicians uh, will remove uh, their children from Brayburn and uh, such big schools and bring them into public schools. I think that that's the change that we've been wanting. Exactly. Now, Anita, since the youth feel that they need an aspiration in terms of economic, social, and cultural, we, are, we can't feel it. Mm -hmm. It was reported that. Mm -hmm. We can't feel it. Mm -hmm. How can we be now involved? Mm -hmm. uh, Pithon has mentioned of us being sent to the shop and coming with the unga. Mm -hmm. But now, how do we get ourselves into the kitchen? Mm -hmm. So, uh, number one, when you look at the report, when you're looking at the youth, you're actually struggling to find the youth. You, we, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are taking ourselves as uh, maybe a tags of inclusivity, shared prosperity. I mean, there's no direct mention of the youth. And, uh, as you mentioned about the cake baking process, for example, there's, a, there's this suggestion. Okay, there's been a, a report on uh, political, economic, and social rights. There's been a, uh, a fight, which one comes first? Social, economic, you know, you being able to go to your daily lives and then the political. Mm -hmm. Now, the, 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 um, the big thing is the politics actually happens to be more important than the economic and social because it's the politics that determines the distribution of resources. Mm -hmm. Where am I getting at this? For example, uh, we have the devolution also in um, the nine-point agenda, which means money should trickle down. Uh, we have the aspect of having a governor and a deputy governor who is a woman. Mm -hmm. But as the youth of this country, we are saying, let the deputy governor be a youth. Because when it's a youth, then it's a man or a woman, and it's an even playing field. Mm -hmm. Why are we saying this? We already have the position of 47 uh, women rep. When, when we have the youth at the decision, uh, at the seat, at the decision making table with the governor, then we will feel like, even when we are talking about distribution of resources, mm -hmm then it can work. Then uh, currently as a matter of practice, the Council of Governors is requesting governors to have DCECs who are also the, uh, the gov deputy governor as a CEC. Mm -hmm. So if the youth become the deputy governor in terms of trickle down effects, then I feel like that's one of the small areas in which we can have a bearing. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I also insist on, it's not enough for the report to talk about, it talks about a seven years tax amnesty for the youth, someone under 35 if you have a business. Mm -hmm. we, we have a problem currently of pending bills. And then the same people we are, we are doing AGPO, where are youth, access to government opportunities for youth, women, and persons with disability, 30%. No government office, uh, talk about office of registrar of political parties, talk about AI, because all these receive money from the exchequer. None of these have been able to subscribe to 30%. And then now to make things worse, it's the pending bills. You getting that contract is still a problem. Even after you get that contract and you supply and you have debts with the bank, debts with everyone, you're still not being paid. That's why we are saying some of these fundamental issues, let's have, they must be introduced through an act of parliament and they must have specific pr provisions for how the youth will benefit. Because, for example, like AGPO, if we put a timeline, and I remember Dendwale wanted to introduce that bill, mm -hmm. maybe let's say three months, the, the, the bills must have been paid. Because the people who feel this impact are the youths because if you are a big businessman most of this big kina, i'm talking of the levels of kinamanu chandaria then even if you don't pay them for two years it's not an impact mm -hmm. but the youths that actually go get business from government they are not being paid the issue of taxation we are still talking about the issues of uh, jobs if my friend here wants to go to even vie access to political government political office he still mm -hmm. requires uh, chapter 6 documents on leadership on, on inter and integrity. integrity how will he be able to get all this either we get a waiver or a complete like zero percent mm -hmm. to enable him to go um access to political parties which space does he have? Like we're looking at all aspects, economically through AGPO, mm -hmm. politically through access to political parties and how we can access powers. Mm -hmm. I mean, that we know how political parties are run. Mm -hmm. They are not institutionalized. Today I was at an ORPP meeting, mm -hmm. and these are the, still the issues that are, are bring brought forth. We are looking at cultural. In terms of cultural, we are looking at the musician, perhaps. Um, how are we nurturing talents in this country? A lot of talents are being wasted in this country. True. And these are things we can look at. Uh, at least for this one, I believe through CBC, maybe things can change a bit. Mm -hmm. But uh, the report still for me has 
has maybe it's to make us feel nice and have a good time and all that but all we need to change this country is i still maintain the constitution of kenya 2010 mm -hmm. anything else let's amend through an act of parliament we don't have the money you heard what moses kuria said let's take the money we revive i come from mount kenya region so i have no bias let's revive prairethram where right now there's no rice what mm -hmm. apate potatoes then we can start talking youths can go back to doing business because you cannot farm and you don't know where your produce is going exactly. yet we used to export okay. so these are the fundamental issues that cut across economic political and cultural issues let the let's have an equal playground mm. all right thank you now Peter, i want to come to you in terms of political <laughs> space over the years we have seen the youth how they have been misused now having learned the political table manners how now do we usher ourselves to the dinner table and share the meal? You talked about political <laughs> um, table, manners. table manners. Yes. Um, I think sometimes in politics you just have to put the table manners aside. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, I appreciate our predecessors, the old politicians, uh, because they started um, way in the 70s when they were student leaders. Uh, they would go to the streets, they would uh, oppose and challenge the gov government of the day. And some of the leaders that we have, we actually uh, appreciate them because of the uh, struggle for you know, multi-party democracy. And so even us, I think uh, we also need to take the same steps. Um, what we are looking for is attention. And uh, if, we, if uh, our coming on screens, if our um, just uh, being on the keyboard is not enough, Therefore, we need to either go to parliament or we need to go to the streets. That's the language that they will understand. Mm -hmm. Because I can tell you for a fact, uh, the political elite, um, they are seeking more or less their interest. And uh, also, us as young people, we must also speak as one voice uh, in order for us to be harder. So um, when it comes to uh, politics, there is no two way. We just have to be courageous enough and we have to vie for those seats. Um, but we must have uh, at the back of our minds uh, the intention and the motives as to why we are vying for these seats because uh, we have been told that they are young parliamentarians but they have done little or less uh, to do with um, uh, issues to do with the young people. And so I think as for us young people is to just have that vision and that motive that uh, we are not just going to speak uh, about the youth agenda but also I speak to the issues that cut across our country. Mm. So we, we don't have any other option apart to we fold our sleeves, we either go to the streets or to occupy parliament. Mm. That's the way that we will find ourselves uh, on the decision-making table. Mm. All right, Anita, there was, uh, there was bit, this bit of trust issue. They said uh, there's a deficit in trust. And uh, I think last year we saw what happened, the appointment, and then uh, our president said, when young people are put there, they are corrupt. Mm -hmm. How do we bridge this and how do we prove ourselves that we young people, mm -hmm. we are very much honest? Mm -hmm. I think for me, corruption, I would not say is a matter of age because even the CS, for example, Muragori, he was, uh, he was accused of corruption. We have uh, P.S. Lillian, if you remember the NY scandal, mm -hmm. she was part of it. I mean, uh, corruption, measuring it as a part of uh, saying it's the youth are corrupt, I, I don't believe so. I believe that this is a part of uh, exclusion because politics is about redistribution of resources. Mm -hmm. And when you have power, you get to decide who sits where. Now there's this tendency of rewarding cronies, which again brings me again to the BBI report. If we leave the deputy governor slot for we say now women can take it and it's not 35 so that it's a man or a woman, let let me and my colleague fight for that position, negotiate for us to get the position of deputy governor. But now we, when we start saying that it's the young who are corrupt, it's just um, a, 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 me a measure of uh, exclusion. Because in politics, you need to, to you know, um, if Hillary, you want to achieve something, there are steps. For example, maybe you want to get a degree. There are steps, and for me, sometimes I call them hindrances to make you, uh, did you get this certain grade? Will you do A, B, C, D for you to get, you know, this master's? Then after master's, we're asking you for you to do a PhD. Did you get that master's? Did you do a dissertation? So for me, it's just a matter of um, 
discrimination and sidelining the youth, which is very weird because we are the majority of the population. And mm -hmm. I'll echo my colleague here who is saying now we must take matters into our own hands because, you know, it happened in South Sudan. Mm -hmm. We saw how al-Bashir was, was cut out. We've seen um, Malema. Mm -hmm. doing his thing EFF in South Africa and his he, every year I mean every election year every election circle is able to add more and more people into parliament we also have Chamisa who really even though he was out of parliament he was able mm -hmm. to uh, oust uh, Mugabe and he's still now dealing with Mnagangwa so if other Africa uh, other youths in Africa are doing it I believe we can also um, do it in fact we should for me I believe we should demand space everywhere we should have demanded space for from the BBI we should have had one youth. We should have demanded space, for example, in the composition of cabinet secretaries. Mm -hmm. We must have a youth. A PS, we had one, Irongo, uh, Irongo Nyakera, who's now political parties liaison committee. He was the PS planning. He was removed. We didn't talk about it. We, now we are demanding, come on CS, come on PS, even ambassadorial position. We are going to look at this criteria because it cannot be business as usual and you are saying even in management we saw the other day even though nairobi hospital is half private public private partnership they mm -hmm. had at least it only had men in the managerial board we asked do you guys don't have a maternity wing where are there no women where are there no youth mm -hmm. and in the same case we are asking we must get um our cut at the decision uh, making table don't invite us to for the launch of the bbi report when there was no youth don't say when when he's saying that he goes june when we are baking cake uh, ask women tengeneze chai weke waze chai kwa meeting <laughs> We, th that that cannot go on because mm -hmm. we are saying if you are the majority of the population, the youths are in both of mini management of schools. Exactly, youths are business people. Mm -hmm. We are saying youth rights are human rights. Yeah. Wow, uh, that's that's you want to add something on that? Yes. And I think to add still on that point of deficit of trust, huh? and I think it uh, the point was also that um, uh, the citizens also don't trust their politicians because most of the time the politicians will come, they will make a lot of promises, and then they will fulfill none of the promises. And I think the challenge that we have as aspiring uh, politicians or young people is for us to be able to walk in integrity and to keep our promises. And I think uh, uh, for a long time we've been taken for a ride. Politicians, they come, they give their manifestos, but when they come uh, into office, they actually do nothing. So I think that's for us is a challenge as, a young, as the young people of Kenya. I, I just want to begin right from you. We can all believe and agree that Kenya is a talented nation. Now, how, how will we fight with the regulatory agencies and badly spent government uh, funds that will suppress Kenyan, Kenyan uh, young innovators because we have many, and including sportsmen and women, because these are the people in the space we want to see them prosper. We have had problems with our uh, sports ministry, our sportsmen and women, how they have been used up. How can we now ensure that now they are protected? It's basically having the right people in power. And I say what we are bringing as young people is the passion. And I think I mentioned um, uh, it's somewhere that uh, if you have old people uh, managing sports, they won't be as passionate as young people managing sports. Because if I'm a sports person, uh, if I'm a, an athlete, and if I'm put in a place where I am managing, you know, um, uh, resources of athletes, I am more passionate because I know uh, what sports does to me. Um, and so we are having the wrong people in the wrong places of uh, power. Mm -hmm. So we are having the wrong people in the wrong places of power. Um, if we had the right people in those places, I can assure you, because of the passion they have and because also of integrity, we'll be able to nurture this. Because we know that uh, we have talented uh, young football players who uh, exit from uh, high school uh, to university, and that's the end of their career. We know of a drama festival, actors and actresses who go after they perform for the president, that's it, they are, their careers end there. So we lack passionate and creative people. That's why I'm saying um, the challenge with our government is that uh, they're trying to, you know, um, uh, preserve the old folks. Uh, and it's actually the opposite of what the private sector does. The private sector looks for 
these young, innovative, intelligent young people. And it's unless the government starts embracing, you know, the innovation of the young people, we won't be going nowhere. That's why we will find problems of our netball team in South Africa. We will find the problem of Zarika complaining that no one has held her hand because really, the, the people sitting in offices, they don't really care mm -hmm. whether we get the belt. So, I, and I think the best suited people for those positions, they are young people like us who have the vision and who also have the passion to do with things to do with arts and also the sports. All right, as we come to Ananda Anita, mm -hmm. speaking of the SDGs and the big four agenda in our country, mm -hmm. now how will we build an economy that is dominated by value creation and not value uh, extraction? Um, values in terms of the actual values like minerals or values in terms of ca uh, character. Everything inclusive. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so, unfortunately, to realize the economics, and I, I mentioned uh, this already, we must also deal with the politics because uh, politics is the foundation. I mean, in terms of allo allocation, if you look at the big four, manufacturing, food security, mm -hmm. universal health coverage, all these have been given a bigger chunk of uh, the monies in the, in, the, in the budget. And that is because that is the fundamental. That's what we are looking at. That's what even donors are looking at. In fact, even the donor working group, especially now in health, agriculture, these are the uh, priority areas. And I believe, also going back to the BBI report, um, I, they believe fixing the politics, making um, the whole uh, winner takes it all mentality. Here you talk and we have the position of uh, the opposition and then you feel like mtuetu akopale. Maybe it's going to uh, cool down the temperatures and all that, but it's still a matter of economics because even if you look at the big four, people from Mount Kenya will say Kyunjori is the CS agriculture. Mm -hmm. So if you are looking at uh, value addition, value creation, why is uh, Kionjori a person of the mountain not able then to revive pyrethrum, uh, tea, coffee and whatnot? Because then again, it still comes down to competence. So when you mention values for me, I'm looking at values, can the best man get the best job? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're qualified and you can, and there are very many people, for example, the deputy governor of Kiambu has worked with Kina Rockefeller Foundation, all these um, uh, international organizations that deal with agriculture. He's done it nationally and internationally. So while, while, while um, the president is choosing his cabinet secretaries and PSs, I would urge him to look at um, uh, competence. I'm not talking more of technocrats, peer technocrats or Metushinda. Mm -hmm. We're talking about uh, people who are actually experienced in their fields and they have delivered a real impact. And now when you get these people, you're choosing them because of merit, okay. meritocracy. We are looking at now the values in terms of character mm -hmm. as opposed to you are one of us and you really add nothing to the table. Oh, yeah. In fact, I would uh, actually like to conclude by saying the CSS from Mount Kenya region have failed us. All right. Yes. That's her words. Python, your final words. Uh, my final words in regard to uh, issues with the young people, we have... The the National Youth Council Act, which is being amended, and I think um, it has not served the purpose or the, the voice. It has not been the voice of the young people of this nation, and I think uh, it's going to be one of the platforms uh, if it platforms for us to have a voice. And number two is to say that Kenya, we know the problems ailing Kenya. Mm. It is not new in the BBI report. We just need the goodwill of our politicians. And I pray that they will not just focus on the positions of the prime minister alone and the uh, opposition leader, mm -hmm. but that they will focus on the issues that are affecting Panjiko and uh, are affecting the young people as a whole. Mm. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Pidon and Anita, for coming and sharing your opinions and your comments. We were talking about the youth being involved in the national cake baking other than sharing and what has come clearly out here is tuacha kutumo kuendea unga we get to the kitchen thank you so much for coming and back home many thanks for keeping us company coming up next is why mashariki keep it y254 be seeing you again on monday my name is dereva hile you have yourself a very good night and a wonderful week